When we look into the future, we often underestimate counter-movement. We go from utopia to dystopia and face challenges balancing realities. We have a toxic mix for today's trend hacker future story, the increasing trend for gender neutrality clothing. A Klarna survey found that 33% of consumers had purchased fashion outside of their gender identity, with higher figures among Gen Z around 50% blue bars. The main reasons are comfort, design, and price. Let's combine this with the future, where we see the metaverse going mainstream in the next decade. We see that avatars significantly influence users' beliefs and attitudes, both online and offline, especially the more sexualized ones. So we might see that the wildness of imagination and creation in the metaverse, and how we dress, talk, and act in the metaverse will also impact who we are. At the same time, we might see a counter-movement of stronger classic role definitions, such as in the story, the real men movement. Let's weave these concepts into a story highlighting the interconnectedness between companies and their customers. Milan, 2034. A city struggles to balance its ambition with the consequences of rapid industrial growth. Despite a decade of green energy initiatives, hazy skies and muted sunlight are still the norm. Sam navigates the complexities of a city that often feels at odds with their identity, walking through the bustling streets. He pauses in front of a luxury boutique on Via Monte Napoleone, its opulent displays contrasting the worn-down buildings surrounding it. The robotic mannequins inside, draped in high-end fashion, seem to represent a world that is out of reach for most Milanese residents. Sam catches their reflection in the store's window, a brief glimpse of the person they present to the world versus the person they truly are. The disconnect between these two selves is a constant source of frustration and isolation. In this world of stark contrasts, the metaverse offers an alternative hope. It was relatively recently accepted by the masses and is now an endless reality of virtual dreams. Sam loves the metaverse for many reasons. It is a place where he can express his true self more freely, filtering out judgment or discrimination. Each avatar reflects his unique style and personality. However, the metaverse is not without its problems. The Real Men Movement, a far-right extremist group that originated in various right-wing countries, has seized upon it and exploited it from the early days of this digital frontier. They quickly establish a strong presence, weaponizing the metaverse by utilizing a new AI-powered bot network to amplify their hateful narrative and flood the digital world with a relentless tide of vitriol. They attack anyone who challenges their views or deviates from their rigid standards of masculinity. Their virtual avatars, often adorned with militaristic symbols and weaponry, become a menacing presence, patrolling digital spaces and harassing anyone different. Sam, whose designs celebrate gender fluidity and self-expression, quickly becomes a prime target for the real men's vitriol. His metaverse Threadspace feed is a daily reminder of their growing influence, as their aggressive tactics have transformed the once vibrant marketplaces into deserted wastelands, colorful murals now defaced with hateful slogans. Sam, who was once a proud architect of Threadspace's vibrant culture, now feels like a stranger in their own creation, heartbroken by the loss of the inclusive community that once thrived there. The real men's toxic influence isn't confined to the metaverse. It seeps into the real world, further fueling the already escalating societal tension. Financial inequality continues to grow, widening the gap between the haves and have-nots. The environment groans under the weight of unchecked consumption, and natural disasters become more frequent and severe. Already fraught with toxicity, online discourse devolves into an endless cycle of outrage and misinformation, further polarizing society and making it difficult to distinguish truth from fiction. A ping from Threadspace's dueling circuit startles Sam. An avatar, Brutalis Maximus, their profile adorned with real men insignia, issues a formal challenge. The circuit, a popular platform for settling virtual disputes and showcasing creative talent, offers a stage for this clash of ideologies. The terms are laid out in a smart contract, a design-off judged by a panel of fashionistas and AI critics.
The victor won't just win bragging rights, they gain control of the virtual Times Square billboard for a day, and their message is broadcast across the metaverse. Fear gnaws at Sam's resolve. A duel with a real men's supporter? It is a gamble, a risk he can't afford to lose. But the thought of his designs being silenced, his voice drowned out by the chorus of hate, is unbearable. With a deep breath, Sam accepts the challenge. A hush falls over the digital coliseum as Sam's creation is unveiled, a hush quickly replaced by a gasp of awe and admiration. The model, an androgynous figure with a shaved head and a serene expression, glides down the runway, showcasing a design that defies categorization. It features color-changing clothes and textures, blending soft silks with rugged denim and intricate lace with raw edges. The garment flows and shifts with each movement. Brutalis Maximus's design, unveiled with a thunderous roar that shakes the virtual rafters of the Colosseum, is a stark contrast to Sam's creation. The model, a hypermuscular avatar with short hair and a scowl etched onto its face, stomps down the runway. Its heavy footfalls echo through the digital space as it showcases a hulking mass of metal and leather. Studded with jagged spikes, and emblazoned with the glowing insignia of the real men. Every inch of the design screams aggression and an outdated adherence to traditional masculinity. The crowd, a digital mosaic of diverse avatars from every corner of the metaverse, erupts in a cacophony of cheers and boos. The real men supporters, their avatars clad in similar militaristic garb, roar their approval, raising virtual fists. In contrast, those who champion inclusivity and self-expression recoil in disgust, their avatars turning away from the spectacle or flashing angry emojis in disapproval. The judges observe the proceedings with varying degrees of fascination and disdain. Some lean forward in their virtual seats, their digital eyes scanning every detail of the designs with analytical precision. Others recoil, their avatars' expressions contort in barely concealed disgust at the blatant display of aggression and exclusion. After a tense moment of silence, the head judge, a legendary fashion icon known for her avant-garde designs and fearless advocacy for self-expression, rises to deliver the verdict. Her avatar, seeming to defy the laws of physics, commands the attention of the entire arena. In this clash of visions, she begins, we have witnessed two diametrically opposed interpretations of beliefs. One embraces the boundless possibilities of self-expression, the fluidity of gender, and the beauty of diversity. The other clings to rugged notions of masculinity, seeking to confine creativity within the narrow boundaries of tradition. She pauses, her gaze sweeping over the two designs displayed on the virtual runway, a holographic projection shimmering in the center of the arena. The tension in the digital air is palpable, a tangible force holding the crowd's attention. While both creations demonstrate technical skill and a clear understanding of their respective ideologies, she continues, we can only have one winner of this duel, and the new owner of the Times Square billboard is...